Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This verse is from our Gospel lesson for today, from John 15. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In the New Testament, there are two followers of Jesus named Philip. Philip, the apostle, was one of the twelve disciples of Jesus who accompanied our Lord during his earthly ministry. And today, I want to talk about the other Philip, the one that the church refers to as Philip the deacon or Philip the evangelist. This Philip is first mentioned in the scriptures in Acts chapter 6, a few weeks or months after the ascension of Jesus into heaven. Now the Bible reads that Philip was known by the church to be full of the spirit and wisdom. That's the reputation he had among his fellow Christians. Philip was full of the Holy Spirit and godly wisdom. And because of that, in Acts 6, Philip was one of the seven men chosen by the church in Jerusalem to oversee the daily distribution of food. Chosen so that the apostles of our Lord could give their attention to the ministry of the word. The apostles prayed over Philip and laid their hands on him to equip him for this important work, overseeing the distribution of daily bread. Now to use the imagery of Jesus for our, from our gospel lesson for today, Philip is connected to the vine, his savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why he is filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why Philip is filled with godly wisdom. And that's why he is bearing abundant fruit, good works done to the glory of God and for the good of his neighbor. Philip is connected to the vine, his Savior, Jesus Christ. When a great persecution broke out against the Christian church in Jerusalem, Philip was forced to flee the city, but he did not let persecution break his connection to the vine. He stayed connected to Jesus. In fact, after fleeing the city, Philip became an evangelist, a missionary who proclaimed the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. He went to a Samaritan city and taught them about the death and resurrection of Jesus. Philip cast out demons there and healed the sick. He baptized many of the Samaritans. There was great joy in that city, the Bible says. Joy because of Philip's faithful service. Philip is connected to the vine and bearing abundant fruit. Now in our reading today from Acts chapter 8, Philip is on the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And on the road, he met, taught, and baptized an Ethiopian. The man was reading, but not understanding, Isaiah 53, the suffering servant chapter of Isaiah. And so, still filled with the spirit and wisdom, still connected to the vine, still bearing abundant fruit, Philip began with that very passage of scripture, Isaiah 53, and told the Ethiopian the good news about Jesus. Philip baptized him, and the man continued on his way, rejoicing, the Bible says. The word of God and the sacrament of holy baptism have securely connected the Ethiopian to the vine, Jesus Christ. Now, several years later, Philip was living in Caesarea. And that's when we learned that, among other things, he was a family man, 
He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied, the Bible said. And we also learn that though years have passed since he baptized the Ethiopian, Philip is still connected to the vine, and he's still serving God and others. In Acts chapter 21, the Apostle Paul was concluding his third missionary journey, and he was passing through Caesarea on his way to Jerusalem, and Philip opened his home to Paul and the the group that was traveling with him. And they stayed at Philip's house for several days, enjoying Philip's hospitality. And when it came time for Paul's departure, Philip and others were concerned about Paul's safety because they knew that Jerusalem would be a dangerous place for Paul. But in the end, they put the matter in God's hands, saying, Thy will, the Lord's will, be done. Although several years have passed since he baptized that Ethiopian and uh, evangelized in Samaria, although several years have passed and he now has a home in Caesarea, Philip still is connected to the vine. He's still filled with the Holy Spirit. He's still filled with godly wisdom and still bearing abundant fruit. Good works done to the glory of God and for the good of others. Over the years, Philip didn't allow persecution to sever his connection to the vine. He hasn't let growing older, establishing a home, and being busy raising a family sever his connection to the vine. Whatever temptations Philip has wrestled with over the years, Whatever tragedies and heartaches he has endured, with the help of God, he let nothing sever his connection to the vine. And we should think that today Philip's soul is in heaven and he is still connected to Jesus. Now like Philip and like the Ethiopian, the word of God, and the sacrament of holy baptism have connected you to Jesus. You have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has taught you heavenly wisdom. You know how to bear abundant fruit, good works done to the glory of God and for the good of others. With the help of God and his Holy Spirit and his holy word, Don't allow persecution, temptation, tragedy, heartache, or the passing of time, or the busyness of life sever your connection to Jesus the vine. Be assured that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. Keep being the person God has called you to be, faithfully doing the things that he has called you to do. And remember that it was important to Jesus that he stay connected, that he stay connected to his heavenly Father, who he calls the gardener in John 15. You know that Jesus didn't let persecution, temptation, tragedy, heartache, or the passing of time or the busyness of life sever his connection with his heavenly Father. And I believe Jesus experienced all those things, persecution, temptation, tragedy, heartache, the passing of time, the busyness of life. But he allowed none of those things to break his connection to his heavenly Father. The only time his connection to the Father was severed was at the cross on the afternoon of Good Friday. On the cross, <clears throat> on the cross, you remember how Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? And Jesus cries out to God, but God answers his cry with silence. God the Father, the gardener, 
has made him who had no sin to be sin for us. That's what's happening on the cross. In the darkness of Good Friday, the innocent one is treated like a branch that has withered and is cut off and is thrown into the fires of hell. On Good Friday, there is darkness for three hours as Jesus endures the abandonment that our souls deserve. And he dies, offers up his life for all the foolish things we've done to endanger and damage our connection to God and his mercy. And thanks be to God that when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, he means that the sins of the world have been atoned for, and now his connection to God is restored. And so Jesus says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then Jesus died, and his eternal soul went to heaven to await the third day, Easter Sunday. Because Jesus suffered that broken connection in our place as our substitute, we are forgiven by God. Because Jesus suffered that broken connection in our place as our substitute, it's okay for us to believe and know with certainty that we will live forever in heaven with him. The word of God and your baptism are the things that connected you to Jesus when your faith in him was new. Remember his word and the gifts that you received in baptism the gifts of faith and forgiveness and eternal life and the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we confess our sins and are, and are absolved of them, forgiven of them, the damage that sin does to our connection to the vine is undone and our connection is restored. Thanks be to God for his gift of confession and absolution. When we eat and drink our Savior's body and blood, our connection with him is nourished and strengthened. Thanks be to God for this gift of Holy Communion. And when Jesus appears in glory on Judgment Day, he has promised that he will make all things new again, including us, his church. On that day, our resurrected bodies and our eternal souls will be knit back together again. We will live eternally in God's vineyard, branches eternally receiving life from Jesus Christ, the vine. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting, amen.